Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In today's video, I will show you how we can leverage the approval action in Power Automate and send attachments. These file attachments that we will send will go along with the approval action so the approver can view the files and directly take their decision. This video will cover four use cases, files uploaded with Microsoft Forms, SharePoint document library, email attachments, and SharePoint list item attachments. So let's get started with the video, but first, my introduction. To get started with approval attachments, in the approval action in Power Automate, we have the option here of adding attachments. Now in my scenario here, I have a flow that gets triggered manually. Now for the attachments related to the approval action, we need to provide two pieces of information. The name of the attachment, which is the file name with the extension, and then the content of the attachment, which must be in base64 format. You can add multiple attachments related to the same approval action. Right here, we can click on add new item and keep adding more attachments. You can also go ahead and use the switch to input entire array. So if I click this, here I can provide a dynamic array of attachments. Now let's take a very simple use case. I have a document library in SharePoint. The user will upload a document in my document library and trigger the flow manually from the document library. I want that document to be added as part of the approval attachment so for that, I will leverage an instant cloud flow and use the for a selected file trigger in SharePoint. Click create. In the trigger action, pick my SharePoint site, pick my library name, and now I need to start my approval process. So I'll click on new step, use the start and wait for an approval action, pick the approval type. In my case, I'll pick first to respond. I'll give this a title call this invoice approval for the name of the file that the user has uploaded. I will assign this to myself. And now to go and add the attachments, I will go to show advanced options. And this is where I can attach that file. So for the attachment name, I will select the file name right here. Now for the attachment content, if we look at for a selected file trigger, we don't have the content of that file, that's because this trigger does not give you the file content. Now to get the file content, I will go to add an action. It's a little bit of a long route to get it, but we have to take these steps. The first action we will use is get file properties. So I'm gonna select this, pick my site address, pick my library name, and for the ID, I will get that ID directly from the trigger. This will give me all the properties of my file. Now we need the content of the file. So I'll go to add an action and use the get file content SharePoint action. Once again, pick the site address and for the file identifier from the get file properties, if you search for identifier from the get file properties, you will get that property. So select that. And this now will give you the content, the actual content of that file in base64 format. Now for the start and wait for an approval action, under attachment content, we can directly go and pick the file content property from the get file content action. And this now will upload that file that the user has added in SharePoint to this approval action. And then the standard steps follow. We can check the outcome of the approval. So I will add a condition, check the outcome. Now, because the focus of this video is purely on the attachments for approvals, I will just add a simple compose action here and call this approved. And for the no side of the branch, again, I have a compose action that says rejected. Once I'm done with building my flow, I will click save. I have given this flow a name called invoice approval. Back to my document library, I will go ahead and upload an invoice. Once the document is uploaded, the user can select the document, go to automate, 
and select that flow that we created, which is in voice approval. And from the right hand panel, we can run the flow on demand. So this now will trigger the flow. So we can see that the flow is running. We can see the flow run in action right here. And right now the flow is waiting for the approval response. If I head over to my email, I can see that file that was uploaded in SharePoint right here as an attachment in my approval action. If I select this, I can see the contents of that file right here. If you get any issues here that the file cannot be opened or the file is corrupted, well, high chances that you have not provided the file name along with its extension or you have not provided the contents of the file in Base64 format. So the approver can directly see the file right here and then take the approval decision right here in the email itself. I'll click on submit. The decision will be recorded in the flow. We will see that this action will now complete and it will move ahead to the condition. We were checking the outcome and if it is approved, all I was doing was just printing the word approved in my flow. And that's exactly the step that has executed. So that's how you can add the file in a SharePoint document library directly in your approval action. Next scenario is around SharePoint lists. In a SharePoint list, in my item, I can also add attachments and I can have multiple attachments. So here I have a list called work progress tracker. And let's say my use case is such that whenever the user creates an item in this list, I want to grab all the attachments and send that in the approval action. Now in my previous scenario, I already knew that I only have one attachment because it was one file that the user is going to start the workflow on. In this case, the user can have multiple attachments. Basically, the attachments are dynamic in nature. And the number of attachments that the user will upload can be different. Now in this approach, wherein I added the attachment name and content, if I know how many files I have, I can keep adding new items and associate those attachments right here. But in case of dynamic attachments, you would want to go ahead and switch over to the input array. Now in this example here, if I switch over to input array, we can see the actual array that the attachments property expects. It expects an array that has these two properties, the name and content. So what we need to do is we need to form a dynamic array of attachments coming from that SharePoint list item and provide it to the start and wait for an approval action. So let's see how we can do that. So this time I want to start my flow when an item is added to that list. So I'll go to automated cloud flow, select when an item is created and click create. Once again, I'll pick my SharePoint site, pick my SharePoint list. Now the when an item is created action will not give you the attachments. So what you need to do is first call the action, which is get attachments. So I'll pick the get attachments action from SharePoint. Once again, it's asking me for the address of my site. I will pick my site. I will pick my list. And now it's asking me for the ID of the item for which I need to grab the attachments. And this I will directly get from the trigger. So I'll pick ID. And this now will give me all my attachments, but I need the content of the attachments because I want to attach it to the approval action. So for that, we have a get attachment content action in flow. So I'm going to pick that action from the SharePoint connector. Once again, provide the site address, the list name, the ID of the list item the file is attached to that is coming from my trigger. So I'll pick this. And the file identifier is what we need to pick from the output of the get attachments action. And that is right here. So I'll pick this. And the moment I do that, flow is going to add and apply to each loop. The reason is because you can have one or more attachments. The get attachments action returns an array. You will get this loop. Now in this loop is where I'm getting the content of my file. For the approval action, what we need is that array that has the name and the content. So to create that array, I will add an action, search for variable, 
and use the initialize variable action. Give this variable a name. I'm going to call this var attachments. The type I will select array. So I'm just initializing an empty array. Now in the apply to each loop, when I get the content of the attachment, I want to go ahead and append that data into this variable. So I'll go to add an action and use the append to array variable action. Here I will pick my variable and for the value property, this is where we need to define that JSON. So the way we'll define it is I'll open the curly brackets, close the curly brackets. Remember it expects the JSON to have those two properties case sensitive. So the first one is name colon. I need to give the name of my attachment file. So for that, from the get attachments action, we have display name. So I'm going to pick this and then I'm going to add a comma because I'm adding my second property now, which is content colon. And here I'm going to provide the attachment content that's coming from the get attachment content action. And this is now the complete structure of my JSON object that's going into the array. Now, if the user has multiple attachments, this array variable will have that structure defined for me. Once I have this in place, I'll go to add a new step. I can go to start and wait for an approval. Once again, pick my approval type. Add a title for the approval, pick who the approval task is going to be assigned to. And now under show advanced options, this is where I need to upload my attachments. Now, because I need this to be dynamic, first step, I will click on the switch action right here, this little icon. So I'll click this. And now for attachments, I will go ahead and pick that variable that I created. Once I'm done with this, the following steps are same as before. I've just checked the outcome of the approval and then I can take necessary actions depending upon the outcome. I have given my flow a name and I will go ahead and click save. Once my flow is saved, my flow is now listening and ready to go. Back to my list item, I will go ahead and create a new item in this list because that's how my flow triggers. I filled out my form. And here I can go ahead and add attachments. So in this case, I'll upload an Excel file, a PDF file and a Word document. So I've uploaded three attachments here and I will click save. So I have my item created with attachments and I have my flow triggered. So if I select this, I can see my flow run in action. You can see the get attachment step has gone ahead and grabbed all the attachments. It has looped through all of those attachments, which are those three attachments. And it started appending them to that array variable and finally starting the approval action. If I go to my email, here is that approval action. I have those three attachments right here. I can select them and look at all the attachments right here. And I can take the approval response right here within the email itself. Once again, I'll just say approved and submit. Once the response comes in, my flow then checks the outcome of the response. And in my scenario, I just completed the flow. Next scenario is around Microsoft Forms. Now with Microsoft Forms, you have the ability for users to upload documents. So in Forms, if you go to add new, here you can use the file upload feature. I already have that added here. I've called it documents. And I've also given a maximum limit as to how many files can a user upload. In my scenario, I've said the user can upload up to five files. So my form is ready. Now my use cases, whenever the user submits the form, I want all those documents to go for approval. Back to flow. The trigger here will be the automated cloud flow. The trigger will be when a new response is submitted in forms, I will click create. I will pick my form, go to new step. Use the get response details action from Microsoft Forms. Once again, pick my form. And then for the response ID, I will get it directly from the trigger. Now after this, I will name my flow and save my flow. Now I'll go ahead and fill the form and submit the form. I'll just submit the form here. I'll enter my name. 
upload a couple of files and click submit. Here I can see that the flow has triggered. And if we go to get response details and go to show raw outputs, here I get the JSON output of the get response details action. I will go ahead and copy this. And I've gone ahead and pasted this in Visual Studio Code. Now the key thing I want you to understand here is, if we look at the output of that get response details action, I had two fields that I added as part of my form. One is the name and the other one is the documents. If we look at the body attribute, each field gets a unique ID in forms. So here is that name field and I entered Reza and then for the documents, here is that ID. But if we look at the response, it's sending the response in a string format and in that I have the name of my file and I have a link to the file. And that file link is a link to my OneDrive. That's because I created that Microsoft form. So all the attachments will be stored in my OneDrive in a specific folder. So here's the path to that document right here. And this string actually has a JSON format to it, wherein the JSON has the name property, the link property and other properties. Plus it is an array because a user can upload multiple files. So the key for us is to grab this value. And remember this value is coming as a string. We need to change this to JSON. So back to my flow, we'll go ahead and add a new step right here. The first step I will add is I'll add a compose action. And here under dynamic content, I can see my fields, my name field, my documents field. Now this is going to give me that string and I do not want the string. I want the actual JSON. So I'll go to expression and write the function JSON. And within this function, I have my mouse pointer clicked right here within these brackets. I'll go to dynamic content and pick documents. So JSON function and within this, I have that dynamic content entered right here. I will click OK. Now, if you want to see the actual code behind this, just click on the three ellipses and go to peak code you will see the code logic that's implemented behind this. It gets the output from this action, which is get response details. And then from the body attribute, it is picking the value of this good. And this ID that you see right here is that same ID in that JSON output, which relates to the documents. And this is a string. We had to convert it to JSON. That's why we added the JSON function. Now what I can do is I can loop through all the documents. So for that, I will click on new step, add apply to each. And here I'm going to pick the output of the compose action. This is a JSON array. I know that because I'm directly pointing to that file upload field in Microsoft form. Now within this, we have the name of the file and the link to the file. We do not have the content of that file in base 64 format the file is getting stored in OneDrive. So right here in flow, I will add an action called get file content from OneDrive for business. So I'm going to select this. Now for the file identifier, I need the ID. Back to my JSON, I have the name, I have the link, but I need the ID. And right here, there is also an ID property. So how do I grab this? Here, I will head over to expressions and use the expression item ID. Once I have this expression complete, I will click on OK. So this will give me the content of that file. Now this is a for loop. It's going to loop through all those attachments and I need to send that in a specific format to my approval action. So to do that, once again, same steps as before, I will add an action, search for variable, pick initialize variable. I'll initialize a variable called where attachments of type array. And in my apply to each loop here, I will add an action, which is the append to array variable action. Select that variable. And here we take those same steps. We need to put the name property and the name of the file. Once again, from the JSON, we have a property called name, which gives me the name of the file along with its extension. 
So here I'll go to expressions, item, name. I'll click OK. For the content, I will grab it directly from the get file content action. So I'll pick file content. This will now fill up the array based on the attachments that the user has uploaded in the Microsoft form. And now I can add a new step, use the start and wait for an approval action, fill in the details of the approval action, go to show advanced options. Once again, my attachments are dynamic. So I'll click the switch icon here to the array. And here I will pick that variable. So let's say in this case, if it's approved, I want to upload all those files into a SharePoint document library. I already have my array that has the name of the file and the content of the file. So what I will do right here, it's add and apply to each loop, loop through the array variable. And in this, start creating my files in my SharePoint library. Pick my site address, pick my document library for the file name. Here in my array, I have the name property. So to read that, I will go to expression and use item of name. So that'll pick the name of the file, which also includes the extension. And for the file content, I need to read the content property. So item of content. That's the expression. I'll click OK and that completes my flow. I will click save. So let's go to the Microsoft form, enter a name. I'll upload a couple of files, click submit. The flow is now running. The approval action has started. If I go to my email, I can see those two attachments right here. That's the image I uploaded and here's the Excel file that I uploaded. In this case, let's say I go approve, click submit. My response is recorded. The flow now moves ahead, checks the condition of the response and now starts uploading those files in SharePoint. And if I head over to my SharePoint document library, I can see those files uploaded right here. If I would have rejected it, it would have gone to the no side of the branch and no files would have been uploaded. One final use case is around attachments in Outlook. So I could have a dedicated mailbox wherein emails arrive, they could have attachments, and maybe I want to add approvals on them and then accordingly move them into my data source. I will create once again an automated cloud flow and pick the when a new email arrives action version three in my case here, I'll click create. For the trigger, I will use include attachments as yes. And this should only trigger when the email contains attachments. So I'll say yes. So this will give me all the attachment details. Create an array variable. Use the append to array variable action. Here, I will pick my variable and in the value, once again, we have to define that JSON structure. So the name is the name of the attachment. So I'll just pick it directly from my trigger, which is attachment name. The moment I select this, it will apply and apply to each loop because attachments is an array. You could have more than one attachments in an email. I'll put a comma. Add the next property, which is content. I will directly pick attachments content. Once I have this in place, my variable is ready. I can go to new step and configure the approval action. Put the approval details. And here for the attachments, once again, I'll switch to the array format and just pick the variable. And then I've gone ahead and checked the outcome and we can take necessary actions, either move the files, we can store the files in any system of a record, notify users, and a lot more. Bear in mind, I'm uploading all my attachments in one go to the same approval action. If you need to approve the attachments one by one, you will probably have to run this in a for loop. I've done a lot of videos on approvals around how to assign approvals dynamically, track the approval responses, send reminders for approval actions, and a lot more. All those links are in the description of this video, so do check that out. Now here I've completed my flow. I'll click on save. I'm gonna be sending myself an email in this case, a couple of documents, and I'll click send. The moment I receive the email with attachments, we should have the flow trigger, which is right here. And now the flow is waiting for the approval response. Here as the approver, I get those 
files in attachments. I can select them, but I'll get this error. It says we can't open this file. Now, why did this happen? If you look at the new email arrives action, the output here, if I click on click to download, and if we just look at it in Visual Studio Code, you will notice that content bytes has the content of that document. However, there's also a property called content type. So we have content type, we have content bytes. And if I go to any of the previous flows that we created, so let's say I go to that form attachment approval flow. If you observe the append to array variable action, when we were adding the content of the file, it was going in this format. It's content type and content, right? So we need this format to be maintained. If this format is not maintained, it will result in the file not loading. So here, if I go to apply to each and look at the append to array variable, if you look at content, it has the bytes, but not the information of the MIME type. So now we need to do a little bit of additional work here. So here, instead of using content bytes, I'm gonna change this to, I'll add that JSON structure, the content type, I will pick from attachments content type, comma, the content, I will pick from attachments content. Now that I have this, I will go ahead and save my flow and I will re-trigger my flow. Here is the new email that I received. This time, if I select on the PDF document, I can see the actual content of that file. So it's very important that we maintain all those formats and it depends upon the type of the trigger that you're using. And finally, the last part of this video is around the limitations and restrictions around the approval attachments feature. You need to be aware that there are size limits. The maximum size of the file per attachment is five megs. This can be changed by your environment admin. There are restrictions to the type of the file. Once again, this can be changed by the environment admin. The approvals connector does enforce a maximum 50 MB limits on the combined size of all the attachments. This limit cannot be changed. Here is an example of a sample flow I created and I purposely went above the limit of the attachment size for all my attachments. You can see the error message right here. The combined attachment size of, in my case, 65 megs exceeds the limits of 50 MB. You also have some naming restrictions. Your file names cannot contain these special characters. If you have those file names, you would have to use expressions and flow to replace those file names when you're uploading it for your approvers. And finally, the attachment content restrictions. I kind of showed this in my video itself. It has to have that base 64 format to it. It needs to have that pattern that I showcased throughout this video. And the final limitation is around the approval action inside emails only. When you get those attachments in the email, if the combined size of those attachments exceeds five megs, then the approver will not get those attachments in the email. Rather, they will get a message that says, this approval has attachments that are too big for the email. And here is one example of that. The combined size in my scenario here of my attachments exceeded five megs. I did not get those attachments in the email. It says this approval has attachments that are too big for the email, but I can go to the flow portal and view them. So if I click on this link, this will take me to that approval action directly in flow. And I can see all those attachments right here. I can download them, open them and see the content of those attachments. So that was all about the attachments feature for flow approvals. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.